The update is a rather mixed bag, but we also see some changes in the files hinting at a new knife and some other things worth bringing up in this video. So let's go through it right after Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is an automated service that lets you trade skins instantly for a fee, sign up now, and get up to $5 bonus. Simply add items from your inventory, then find skins that matches your current balance. Site offers live support 24-7. You can also top up your balance if you're missing a few dollars, and there's a lot of skins to choose from. Visit my link down below to get to Skins Monkey. Now this update comes with gameplay changes, but there is a controversial one, so let's start with that. Weapon switching after releasing the fire button will no longer cancel grenade throws, but round restart will. Remember the examples that I showed you before where you could throw a grenade and it would cancel the grenade throw? Seems like this is actually the one to fix this. When I talked about this previous patch in my last video, I wasn't sure what it was, but now it seems even more likely that this was for another bug. And at the end of the patch note, it says, but round restart will, which refers to situations like this shown by Zipster Rocks, where if your timing was too good, you could throw a nade at the final moments of a round ending and it would follow you the next round. So based on my understanding, this patch note addresses both the issue of grenades being thrown through time and space and the issue of throws being canceled by a quick weapon switch after initiating the throw. Sounds good, right? Well, here's the part that you were waiting for. In this first example, I throw my nade, wait for the game to automatically switch to my weapon to shoot. You can hear that the weapon shoots after the first bounce of the nade. But if I throw the nade and manually switch to my weapon at the correct time, you can hear that the weapon is ready to shoot a little earlier. Now this is nothing new, and anyone who is good at the game knows this. We've all learned the timing. It's a skill-based technique. Today's update removes that skill-based technique, so you can no longer manually switch your gun to prepare it faster. Instead, the timing is always the same regardless, and you have to wait for just as long to be able to shoot. As you already know, I'm not a fan of anything that lowers the skill ceiling, but I'd love to know what you guys think of this. Maybe there is an argument to say that it's a good change in general, in the sense that it's good that the timing is the same for everyone. In fact, this might also be a bug. Let me know what you think in the comments. But next patch note is fun, so instead of being grumpy from what we already covered, fixed an issue where the player's shadow would sometimes show the incorrect animation state. Prior to this update, when you cancel the reloading animation with the quick switch, the shadow looks like a cartoon from the 50s where things were just goofy and illogical. Now, if you thought that looked silly, wait until you see how it looks when you cancel the animation that detached matches the silencer. The shadows didn't know what to do when we canceled the animation, and this update fixes that. Moving on, this patch note focuses on various animation system optimizations. This can be anything from a slight FPS performance boost or smoother animations, but only Valve knows. And this last one for various minor bug fixes to demo playback seems to be a fix for some stuttering moments during demos, but there are still animations that are laggy. Now let's move on to user interface. The first line reads, fix the bug where starting pistols weren't showing in the pistols tab of the equipment view. I've only been able to hear from a small group of people that it just didn't appear. The other one is fixed an issue where silencer would not be shown on weapons when held by characters in the user interface. And yes, it's true, the CT model decided to play without the silencers, which is objectively worse, so here's how it looks after the update. We're at the map updates now, and we also have the exciting stuff behind the scenes, so let's quickly go to Mirage. They fixed the gap under the door at middle. They didn't specify which one, so I had to put my detective glasses on, and I eventually found the suspect. This gap might have even allowed you to see through connector with a special angle and a scope, but in the new update, the gap is gone. Vertigo had a little hidden change where they lowered the ramp on B, and Italy wasn't even in the patch notes, but this wire is new, and the window here has moved. But we could just sum up the rest of the maps by saying that Vertigo, Nuke, Inferno, and Dust 2 will now have this new footstep audio sound when running on railings. So that's the update itself, but now let's talk about the three new discoveries made by Gabe Follower along with Sega. First being, the update added several new skin strings for the Kukri knife, including various colors and patterns like Purple, Tiger Tooth, Damascus, Marble Fade, and several others. Months ago, Crazy Mother MK1488 made a Reddit post showcasing this knife, which was part of the game files. So overall, it's pretty exciting to see these strings, as it likely means we might be close to getting new content. Speaking of content, there's speculation about a new weapon case or remake of an old one as well. And this is the second news. This is based on the observation that some skin artists have updated their skins for CS2, which might suggest that they might be included in a re-released or new weapon case. I mean, it does make sense with the Kruki knife in the spotlight. And finally, the last one being the 2024 service medals, which we will likely see in a content update soon. Or soon, well, I mean, there's little time left before the end of the year. I wonder if Val will make it, but thanks for making it this far into my video. Peace.